Euler began the modern study of continued fractions with his 1744 essay on continued fractions. To continue discussion, it helps to introduce some terminology. In modern terms, the continued fraction has partial denominators a, yes, I know it's not really a denominator, b, c, d, and so on. It should be clear that a rational number has a finite continued fraction expansion. It should also be clear that as long as we make the obvious restriction that our partial denominator should be positive integers, that an irrational number has an infinite continued fraction expansion. But there are irrational numbers, and there are really irrational numbers. Let's take a look at that. So Euler used the approximation for square root of 2 and found the sequence of partial denominators. So remember, we can find these by applying the Euclidean algorithm. So we'll divide to get a quotient and remainder, divide to get a quotient and remainder, and lather, rinse, repeat. And a rather remarkable thing happens our quotients all seem to be 2, corresponding to the relationship. Now, we shouldn't generalize from one example, and so Euler considered square root of 3, and he didn't say what approximation he used, but if we use this approximation and apply the Euclidean algorithm, we get And so in this case, our terms seem to alternate. The remarkable regularity of the terms led Euler to note, it does not follow from the division that the quotients will continue in this fashion, but it seems likely, and in fact it can be proven. Which, if you read that carefully, is a very interesting thing to say, because Euler is essentially saying that we begin with our suspicion of what is true, and then go on to a proof. So again, it helps to introduce some modern terms. If the sequence of partial denominators repeat after some point, we say the continued fraction is periodic, and Euler considered the problem of finding the value of a periodic continued fraction. So let's consider the simplest case where our partial denominators are all the same, except for that first denominator, which again isn't really a denominator, but we call it one. So we find x minus a equals, and at this point we'll make an important observation. The repetend, this portion of the continued fraction that repeats over and over again, is the same as the whole thing. It's x minus a, and so we can replace this repetend with x minus a and get an equation that doesn't extend off to infinity. And once we do that, we can solve for x and find Now, by assumption, a and b are positive, so our continued fraction will also have a positive value. So the positive solutions to this quadratic equation will be And so x can be expressed in terms of a and b. So note that if a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2, we get x is equal to the square root of 2 and the continued fraction expansion, which is what we found earlier. For convenience, we can let b equal to a. And what that will do is that will zero out this portion that isn't under the radical. And then our formula for x gives us, and so in general, and this allows us to find things like a continued fraction expansion for square root of 5. So our formula gives us, and if we let a equal to 2, then we get square root of 5 equal to, and our convergence will be, 
which give us successively better approximations to the square root of 5.